Um, um, that's another one. Uh, restricted stock shares. They they do, they yeah. do that. They do the quarterly the Amazon, bonus. To Amazon. You know, if you stay another six months, we'll give you a bonus. And and the problem, they do get people with that. There's upside potential, right? But at what cost? Right. I mean, I think Amazon has the highest divorce rate, literally. Yeah, wouldn't and, be surprising. And and I mean, I, I made it. You know, I had him as a client. Um, I think it was in 2010. I fired him though. Okay. I, I don't want to say I fired him. I just stopped working with him. Well, that's but, but that, it, it, that's I like the way you put that there because that's the right mindset, right? It's like not only the people you work with in terms of your colleagues and the employees or the people you surround yourself with, but also your clients and your customers. It, like you should fire your like. I, there's one thing out there I think a lot of people don't think is like counterintuitive to a lot of things, but it's like you should fire customers that you don't like. You track the customers that you want to work it, with. It's so thing, challenging right? because like recruiters are still like, and again, no pun intended to anybody. I feel I use this term like the redheaded stepchild, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. we're like treated like Opie, right? Oh, like, worse, it, worse. It's like, like you're like a fucking plague it, on society. And, sometimes and then it, it, you, we're like an HR attorney. We're like an attorney, right? Yeah, exactly. And we fight against HR because HR doesn't understand recruiting. And HR, HR is in charge of recruiting. As smaller companies, HR is in charge of recruiting. And so what they do is they go to the executive, they report to, here's the metrics, here's the numbers. Oh, wow, recruiting's not doing this. <laughs> hey, guys, why aren't you doing this? It's like, do you not even know what we do? Yeah. Why are you even involved? Who came up with the salary for this uh, role? Well, the, I went on to salary.com and like, why didn't you talk to us? Yeah. That, that, that's a salary in Kansas in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And then at big corporations, they have a VP of, of people talent, right? And then she's way up here and then they have a director of talent. And, the, and, and, and then it gets down to the point where, like, when did you recruit? Oh, you were the person on the, the Last Supper with Jesus. That's when you recruited? <laughs> Well, I, I, I was there too. I was the guy on the left, not the bad guy. Yep. You were the bad guy, but I've been recruiting ever since. Do you realize that, that a lot of the stuff we do, you, we can't even tell you, like what a recruiter does on the daily, they want metrics, right? It's metrics, metrics, KPIs, metrics, KPIs, and, and KPIs, KPIs right. right? Key performance indicators. Yeah. And then the executives, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, he talked to 50 people. That stuff is irrelevant. Yep. Because if you're going to, you know how much like cold <clears throat> calls they had us do? Like they're like, if you don't call at least 50 calls today, <clears throat> like you're a piece of shit. And, and, and like, and that's like minimum, right? And, and then like, if you're like above 150 or 200, you're like <clears throat> a God. But then like you get these fuckers who fake their numbers. They figure out how to game the system. And like, there's this one guy in our office who just like basically faked all his phone numbers and like, you know, but they end up not having business at the end of the day. It's like, why would you care about KPI? Like, I understand you don't want to get fired, but like going for like the because, praise, like it doesn't make sense. Because they, they, they judge your success based upon, they feel like if you don't have these numbers, you're not doing anything. Yeah. They don't judge you based off success. And here's the other thing with recruiters. It's like, well, you didn't get any hires. Well, it doesn't mean the guy wasn't good. Google hired him. Right. Apple hired him. Why didn't we hire him? We're aggressive. Oh, enough. he has no startup experience. Dude, go back to UC Berkeley, get your head out of your ass, <laughs> figure it out, right? I, I yep. dealt with it all the time. I found a guy from Meta, the man, the man, the best of the world. And I sent him to a startup for a founder's engineer role. And, and they said he doesn't have any startup experience. Dude, that guy could have ran circles around you guys. And then you get a guy with startup experience. He has no Fortune 50 experience. And, and here's the problem. It, there's, there's a separation between reality and... And, 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 and what, what will happen to do the job. So right. every job description I see, I have to dissect it and then talk to the, the hiring manager and, and get a reality check out of them, like Black Ice Reality Check, my show, and, and literally go, okay, what is it you want? Because I'm reading this list and it looks like you're looking for Rain Man, mm. right? Yep. And and, they and are. Ray, Ray, they Ray, there's, 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 there's more queens in the deck, right? Like <laughs> th this, this person doesn't exist. And why would they come here? Yep. Well, we're scooter flags. You ain't paying shit. Yep. And there's apples and oranges. Fortune 50 companies pay usually really good. But then startups can pay at a decent pay, but then you don't have the upside. The, the, you have the dream of we'll go public one day, right? Yep. But then you can't compete with a meta. You can't compete with an Amazon because they throw, you know, they throw 280 at you as a senior software engineer, a total package. I had a guy from meta, okay, uh, rendering engineer. Do you know what mm. that is? Rendering, video rendering, yeah. right? Rendering engineer. His total W two last year, uh, uh, twenty. I'm sorry, twenty twenty one because it's twenty twenty three now. Twenty twenty one was a million dollars. Damn. That stock bonuses, everything, nice. salary, right, all that stuff. A million dollars. 
how do you compete with that? Yep. Well, they're laying people off. And so I said, look, it's not about the money. It's about the opportunity. But this is what I'm running into. Yep. And so I have to fight HR. I have to fight the hiring manager. I have to fight the executives. And so as a recruiter, it's not as glorified as you used to be. It's a real challenge. And then letting them know, hey, this is, don't, I'm, I'm paid for my value, not, you're not, you're not, oh, 70 bucks. Here's a good example. I just talked to a company yesterday. Oh, they want to pay 70 for this role. I said, it's not going to happen. 70 mm. an hour? Not going to happen. 125, 130. Well, I told them that. But they'll go hire somebody that's not qualified. They'll have to hire two people at buck yep. 40 now, right? You see and, what I mean? And they'll do half the they'll job. They'll pinch pennies to get success and you won't get there. Yep. It's like, how do you go, how do you go to Japan? Well, I'm going to walk. No, you're not. Right. Are you on crack? <laughs> you're going to take a boat? <laughs> the bearing straight, bro. Exactly. Like, no. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and, and I think like there's a couple of things I want to delve into in that and like bring this towards like, you know, uh, investing and stuff like that. Cause I think there's a lot of, uh, overlaps, but the, cause there's like, you remind every time, like I go into like recruitment type things or whatever, like there's always something you remind me of in terms of the story, like talking about useless HR people or whatever. It's like the, that guy was talking about, um, for that last company that I hired or whatever, it took me, it took me two months to find the guy and get him interested. It took me, uh, probably six full months to end the whole process, get him over to Germany and, and basically, you know, interviewed and, and the offer signed, everything finished, right? Thought and, and everything. And it, they had that role open for like two years in Japan and they'd never found anybody. Yeah. And like, um, <laughs> I didn't know this, but like probably about <clears throat> six, within six months after that guy got hired, basically the HR lady who was in charge there at the headquarters, I, you know. They let her go. Oh yeah. Cause like I just <clears throat> smoked her, but it was one of these things where it's just like, you know, when you get a mercenary versus somebody who's comfortable in their position and doesn't have any reason to continuously improve enough, right, to actually yeah. bring value to a company, which is really what you're talking about, is actually, okay, I need an employee who's going to bring value, right? And it's not the number that's associated. It's not on the spreadsheet. It's not on the KPI. It's not stuff that most people want to be like, okay, all these metrics I can do. But, you know, but, at the end of the day, it's like, can you do the job and are you better than most other people at what you do. And if you can find those people, right, when you hire those people into companies, right, they stay there. Yeah, and it's not our responsibility if they quit. That's right. the other thing. You, you, you as a company and the man, hiring manager and the team, that's, once they get hired, it's your responsibility. Mm. If they quit, that's not our fault. You right. interviewed them. You liked them. Why is it our fault that, 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 that he quit, right? And so yep. everything gets pushed down to the recruiter, right? And, and the other thing that's interesting that you brought up, <clears throat> Charlie, is that in-house recruiters, the reason they're not as successful as they could be is because they're bogged down with metrics and processes. Right. 80 to 90% of their time is being spent in useless meetings, metrics, all this garbage, instead of letting them off the reins and say, go recruit. Right. Yep. If they get three hires, let's say they only talk to half the people. It's funny because you know, oh, um, I need, I need, you know, your inter uh, phone interview, phone screen. I do thirty minutes max, mm. 20, yep. 30 minutes. I That's ask, like, you know, I ask the f basic questions that are needed, like salary, how many years of this technology you have, all this stuff. Right. Yep. I don't ask behavioral based interviewing questions. It's such a waste of time. Give me an example. If you're running down the street naked with a Bud Light beer doing this, it's like nobody cares. Exactly. That's worth. That's worthless. It's like writing code when Microsoft used to say, "Get on the whiteboard and write code." You you don't you use a framework application to write code. You don't write it on the board. Exactly. So co corporate America and the tech space they, sometimes they get things backwards, and they hurt the recruiters more than they know. Yeah. But no recruiter there has the guts to go tell HR or go tell the executive because well, they're, they're job right. security. Well, they never, and they, 